Jesus dealing with demonic forces. Jesus dealing with sin and sin sickness. Drill Sergeant. Another nugget for a fiery trial. A jewel being collected by God. We're talking about Jesus. What did Jesus do? Jesus dealing with demonic forces. Jesus' healings were not confined to physical conditions. One of the most fascinating aspects of the gospel story is the tremendous outbreak of demonic activity during his lifetime. As so often happens, the presence of the best provoked the worst. The light of Jesus stimulated the darkness of evil. Let me say that again. The light of Jesus stimulated the darkness of evil. The Bible is very clear that there is a devil, a supreme anti-God force. And I should have thought that the evidence is pretty impressive for his existence. Not, of course, a joke figure with cloven hoof and forked tail, but an organizing spirit behind all the wickedness, war, and disease among humankind. The ultimate opponent of God and goodness until the new age erupted with its channelers and spirit guides, until a new outbreak of Satanism hit Western society, we scornful rationalists have been very skeptical of the reality of these evil spiritual forces. But we were a tiny pampered minority all down the centuries and all over the world people have recognized the reality of this this malign powers and still do they still do And certainly in the Gospels, there is no beating about the bush. Jesus believed in Satan. Jesus wrestled with him in the three spectacular temptations recorded in the Gospels and continued to fight him every step of the way to the cross itself. And those same Gospels are insistent that Satan has dark forces at his command that can and do affect human beings. The Gospel writers call such people demonized. It has been fashionable to laugh at such ideas, claiming that demonization is only a primitive explanation of what we now know as psychological illness. But that is a very ignorant view. Demonization is not the same as psychological illness at all. Let me say that again. Demonization is not the same as psychological illness at all. This is not the place to go into the matter in any depth. I've dealt with this before. But it is enough here to notice three great differences. Demonization normally takes root in someone's life after the person has been involved in the occult. Psychological illness 
does not. Demonization only shows itself spasmodically. Psychological illness is generally operative all the time. And demonization in contrast to psychological illness responds to the command in the name of Jesus for the oppressive force to leave and the person's restoration is immediate and lasting. At all events, a major strand in the gospel is that Jesus cast out these evil things from lives they were ruining. And I believe it, for I have seen the same things happening time and time again today. The expulsion of dark forces within and is now a spectacular aspect of the coming of the kingdom of God. It is salutary to reflect that the Pentecostal church, which was born only in AD 1900, majors in this ministry of deliverance. It is hardly a coincidence that it is by far the fastest growing church in the world. Statistics suggest that more than one third of all Christians in the world today have become touched afresh by the Spirit of God and are awakened to spiritual gifts which include the ability to set people free from the infestation of these evil powers. We must not exaggerate this aspect of Christianity, but neither must we minimize it. Jesus found the casting out of demons a significant part of his bringing healing and rescue to humankind. We should not be too surprised if the same thing happens today. Even in dealing with sin, but the wholeness or salvation that Jesus brought as he came preaching the kingdom of God and exhibiting its power did not stop at the physical and the demonic. By far the greatest healing Jesus wanted to effect was rescue from the ravages of sin. There is such a thing as breaking God's laws. Mankind doesn't want to believe that today. But there is such a thing as breaking God's laws. There is such a thing as failing to live up to his standards. There is such a thing as being a rebel against God. All this brings guilt, real guilt. Being in the wrong with God. And it matters. It is as lethal as a cancer growing big and life-threatening inside a body that for a while feels there is nothing wrong. It was this hidden cancer, this being in the wrong with God, that Jesus was most anxious to reverse. His whole life was devoted to exposing this disease and putting it to right. The final medicine would be distilled only at the cross of Calvary. And to that we shall turn and deal with later. For the moment it is enough to notice the emphasis Jesus placed on this most serious of all diseases and his passion to heal it. On one occasion, a paralyzed man was brought to him in the most difficult circumstances. The crowd around him was so dense that the group bringing their friend to Jesus could not get through. So they hit on the brilliant idea of climbing the outside steps to the thin mud and wattle roof that was characteristic of the Palestinian home. 
They broke away some of the roofing and let their friend down on the mattress in front of this Jesus. What did this pathetic, paralyzed specimen of humanity most need? It was obvious. He needed healing. But Jesus saw his need more profoundly. He said to him, Your sins are forgiven. Mark 2 and 5. You can imagine what flutterings that caused in the ecclesiastical dove coat. They thought it blasphemy. After all, who can forgive sin but God? Who indeed? And so Jesus says to them in effect, It is all very well to say your sins are forgiven. And nobody can tell whether they are or not. But if I say to this poor man, get up and walk, it will be perfectly obvious to everyone whether I speak from God or not. So in order to show you that the Son of Man, which is what he calls himself, his favorite name for himself, really has power to do on earth what God does in heaven. He broke off and said to the paralyzed man, Get up! Take your mattress and go home. Woo! And he did. A perfectly staggering story. But don't miss the most shattering part of all. Jesus regarded the forgiving of this man's sin as much more important than the healing of his body. Let me hear you say this again. Jesus regarded the forgiving of this man's sin as much more important than the healing of his body. Of course, this man was not the only example of Jesus going to the very root of human sickness and engaging with human sin. There are many others. One is the tax gatherer, Zacchaeus, a nasty piece of work with whom Jesus invited himself for a meal. And what a meal that must have been. Out of it, Zacchaeus emerged a forgiven man. And he showed it by the way he offered to give back fourfold to anyone he had swindled. And in addition to give half of his estate to the poor. That man had lived for money. He had made everything subservient to amassing it. And then he saw it for what it was and was willing to let it go. Not like the other rich man. This one was willing to let that over compulsion driving force for money to let it go. Why? Jesus gives the answer. He says, today salvation or God's own total healing has come to this house. Woo! Let's say that again. Today salvation has come to this house. Luke 19 and 9. Has salvation come to your house today? It's come to mine. I don't know about you, but it's come to mine. Has salvation come to your house today? That's why he was willing to give it up. Because salvation, wholeness, had come to his house. Wholeness. He said, will thou be made whole? I ask you today the same thing that Jesus said. Will you be made whole? Glory to God today. Will thou be made whole? It's your choice. Will you be made whole? Another example is a famous woman in the Gospels. Mary of Magdala, a little village on the northwest of the Sea of Galilee. We are told that she had been afflicted with no less than seven demons. Here we go again. We got some devils in the house. Y'all don't want to talk about that though, do you? He says she was afflicted with no less than seven demons. And Jesus had set her free. 
we have a job today. He said, go and cast out devils. And you want to act like they don't exist anymore. <laughs> That's why they run in the streets. That's why they run it rampant. That's why they're burning up stuff. That's why they're killing everybody. Because you haven't done your portion of casting those devils out. She had been a prostitute. And Jesus had ministered to her God's forgiveness. And given her back her self-respect. Do you want your self-respect back? The result, she became a new person, full of love and loyalty to Jesus, who had transformed her life. That is what forgiveness does. It makes new people of us. And that, above all else, is what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to bring healing at every level. Healing of body. Healing from the malign influence of dark forces. Healing from sin. The question is, what did he do? The Gospels are ambiguous about the answer. He healed all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Matthew 4 and 23. Jesus came dealing with demonic forces and sin. Another nugget for a fiery trial. Jewels being collected by God. Drill Sergeant.